The American Revolutionary War was a bloody, contemptuous conflict born out of oppression suffered by the American colonies at the hands of Great Britain. The many battles that took place between American militia forces and the British Army resulted in devastating casualties and loss of life on both sides. But despite the tragic loss of lives wrought by the bloodshed, the real killer of the American Revolution was actually not the fighting itself. On the contrary, the deadliest place to be in the American colonies during the war was not on the landlocked battlefields, nor those at sea. The place where condemned souls found themselves facing death most auspiciously during the war was on board the horrid British prison ships. Dark, damp, and oftentimes putrid floating jailhouses where most colonial POWs were left to starve. The most notorious of these hellish ships was known as the HMS Jersey, a true horror in history. Stripped of her sails and rigging, the HMS Jersey was moored in the shallows adjacent to the mudflats of Wallabout Bay, within the modern-day Navy Yard Basin of New York. Initially built as a 64-gun man-of-war, the ship had been repurposed before the outbreak of war as a hospital, but once land-based British prisons filled to capacity with colonial rebel forces, decommissioned, neglected, rotting ship holes were converted into floating death camps. The HMS Jersey had been established as the worst of them all. At any given time, the Jersey would house up to a thousand prisoners or more, all crammed into the fetid hold below deck. The portholes of the ship had been sealed up, the only source of light or fresh air being barred ventilation holes cut into the hull. With so many sharing the same filthy, damp space, disease was rampant aboard the ship. Dysentery, yellow fever, typhoid, and smallpox were all common afflictions suffered by the prisoners. First-hand accounts by survivors would note the cacophony of pitiful sounds within the ship, the moans and cries of sick and dying men and boys, medical treatment and common decency but a fever dream for the condemned. During its time as a prison, the Jersey would earn the nickname Hell by the colonists who were well aware of the nightmarish prison ships which entrapped their loved ones. In the summer, the hold was stifling with heat, the air fouled by human waste, infected wounds, and death. The winters could be even worse, with survivors recounting waking up with inches of snow covering them. Others were forced to watch as their limbs slowly blackened from frostbite. One would think a hot meal could help warm the freezing prisoners, but the British rarely fed or offered water to the inmates, and even then, the rations the prisoners did receive were absolutely revolting. If meat was given, it was often raw and putrid. Prisoners were allowed to light cook fires, but oftentimes such a luxury would be denied until the next day, so the starving inmates would be forced to either wait, or if desperate enough, eat the rotten flesh raw. British cooks would occasionally boil the rotten meat, and perhaps some sour oats or flour, in a large cooking vat using the salt water from the bay. The same salt water wherein buckets and buckets of infectious human waste were dumped daily. The only remaining victuals available to the prisoners was moldy, maggot-infested bread, which barely held its form having been half-consumed by vermin. In desperation for more sustenance, some were observed eating from the hog troughs, swine being kept by the British for their own food supply, as their prisoners dined on meals even a dog may not find palatable. Those most desperate to fill their gnawing, shrunken stomachs would remove their clothing in order to pick and eat the thousands of lice that plagued the ship. The death toll on the HMS Jersey was staggering. Up to a dozen or more imprisoned colonists died every day. With so many inmates on board, it could sometimes take weeks before a body was even discovered. The dead were taken up to the deck and dropped in piles, where the following morning they were ferried across the water to the sandy mudflats. The bodies were tossed into shallow mass graves, barely covered by a few shovelfuls of sand. The tides and elements would quickly wash the sand away, exposing the decomposing corpses which would be carried by the waters back out into the stagnant bay. Thousands ended up this way, 
and the surviving prisoners were forced to witness their brethren skeletons bake under the New England sun, no doubt dreading that they would be next. One surviving prisoner, a teenage cabin steward named Ebenezer Fox, captured by British forces while serving aboard a privateer vessel, would later write of the harrowing experience he had within the decrepit holds of the Jersey. I now find myself in a loathsome prison among a collection of the most wretched and disgusting-looking objects that I have ever beheld in human form. Here was a motley crew, covered with rags and filth, visages pallid with disease, emaciated with hunger and anxiety, and retaining hardly a trace of their original appearance. With the signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1783, the American Revolutionary War had finally concluded. At this point in time, there remained only around 1,400 surviving prisoners aboard the entire fleet of England's prison ships. Following the war and the retreat of the British forces, the Jersey was left to rot. For years after, the tides would wash out the mudflats, revealing a ghastly stretch of human remains along the banks of the bay. Locals testified to the grim spectacle at the edge of their waters, remarking how the skulls laid so numerous, they resembled the image of a pumpkin patch. Petitions were made and granted to construct a more dignified resting place for the bones of those who would come to be known as the prison ship martyrs. The monument still stands today in Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn, New York. Below the monument's obelisk lies a crypt containing the bones of those who died aboard the HMS Jersey. The memorial commemorates all those who lost their lives to the inhumane conditions of the ships. It is estimated that over 11,000 men and boys died in captivity aboard the floating prisons, well over the estimated 6,800 American fatalities related to combat. Cruelty and death are no strangers to wartime prisons, from the Jewish death camps of the German army in World War II to the terrifying jungle prisons of the North Vietnamese during the Vietnam War. Finding oneself a prisoner of war is wrought with danger and perilous circumstance. Such is the dangers and peril found aboard the HMS Jersey, perhaps the blackest spot of America's war for independence, making it a true horror in history. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, especially if you are new to the channel. Thanks for watching Horrors in History.